Hey, I'm Sweeney Chad, and I have an quest to find out if it's possible to beat Kerbal Space Program 2 using only aircraft. In this episode, we're going to bring it back down to Earth, or Kerbin rather, because we left Jeb in orbit. And since he tends to be the only Kerbal that's brave enough or dumb enough to pilot our contraptions, we need to get him back. So I pick out a nice beach to land him on after a not sketchy at all re-entry, and my only goal here is to just not blow up. And I think I did a fairly good job of that, despite being a bit of a bouncy landing, it could have been better, but all that matters is Jeb is home safe. And instead of doing any of our missions here, we're going to instead try to get some sights from around Kerbin using the new air sniffer part that we got. Now we got this in one of our mini buying sprees in the last episode, and I just decided to stick it on a plane, which doesn't really look like it was ever designed to carry such a thing. In fact, it looks like Swoony Chat Aerospace is operating a secret fighter program in the background. But nonetheless, this research aircraft is carrying the air sniffer, and the air sniffer takes a long time to sniff. So what do we do for two minutes while we're around the KSC while this thing sniffs the air? Well, I'll tell you what we do. We fly around like an absolute madman. So after unleashing our inner top gun, we decided it's time to go back to the ever boring science, and I decided that the best place to get science would be over top of the water. And I also realized that we literally packed absolutely no fuel in this thing. The only fuel in this was that tiny engine nacelle's spare fuel, which is like 80 points or something like that. But we did get our science, but we're a long way from home. <laughs> so uh, we had to end up ditching this in the water, but we ditched it very softly, might I add and our baby boy Jeb was absolutely fine and dandy. But now that we know that there's actually science to be had just around Kerbin, I decided to build the ultimate science plane, something I could stay in the air for extended amounts of time and fly great distances to every biome I needed to go to. Unfortunately, we didn't exactly have the biggest landing gear, so it did come out a little bit bouncy. And after a quick, safe, and comfortable reset of the landing gear, it was working pretty good. And despite having an ungodly amount of fuel on board, it actually flew pretty good too. So I made a few more tweaks to it and added flaps to lower the landing and takeoff speeds a little bit. And just like that, we're off for our maiden flight, carrying both the air sniffer and the science junior on board. But the first real test of this is going to be seeing if we can actually keep it over the same biome for the entire two minutes that the air sniffer needs to get the report. And not being a helicopter, that turns out to be a lot more difficult than you might think. But we do get our sights, and all that's left to do now is to plan our flight. We're going to try to maximize the biomes that we visit, first heading out to this island and heading inland to the desert, and then going straight from the desert back to the KSC and landing. And I believe this beast of a plane is more than up for the task. So first out, we're going to head out to this island, and it takes quite a while flying over the ocean. You would be surprised to get to this island. Now, this island actually has three different biomes, beach, grasslands, and mountains. So first off, we're going to get that grasslands one, which proves to be really difficult once again, because we had to fly in a circle to stay in one place, but we do get the grasslands. We fly up to the mountains, do the same thing, and we get the science there too. At this point, I'm sure Jeb's pretty dizzy, so we head out to the mainland where the desert is large enough to actually fly in a straight line for two minutes straight. But unfortunately for Jeb, there's some very tiny highlands bombs scattered in the mountains around the desert, and I have to fly in a very tight circle for two minutes. But I'm assuming that's all the bombs that we can get on this trip, so we head back to the KSC, which takes a very long time, but we do eventually spot it and start lining up for our approach. And if you've been around the channel for any amount of time, you probably know that my landings usually suck. And to add to this sucking, I'm still very much in the learning curve of the flat stick that I'm using, and this is my first time landing this aircraft. So it's not looking too good on paper, or real life for that matter, because this wasn't our first attempt. In the first attempts, actually, we didn't even get it lined up with the runway. But in this one, in this one, it was looking really, really good for us. We were slightly off the center line, and that's okay. I mean, it's better than the usual beach that Jeb lands on, so I imagine that the Kerbals are absolutely tickled with this. And it's around this point that I realized I had absolutely no idea what my descent rate was, and I completely had to eyeball it. We floated it a little bit, but we brought it down so smooth. So smooth, in fact, this might just be my best landing ever. And I gave myself a huge pat on the back right after I pried my fingers out of the joystick. And despite having a drag chute and reverse thrust, we did need to tap the brakes a tiny bit and be very careful because it had a bit of a wobbling issue, but we did finally get it to a stop very safely. And we actually traveled over 700 kilometers in that flight and got almost 200 science points. 
But now we're going to move right on to doing the Kerbal Stationary Orbit mission because we can never have enough science points. So we just took our SSTO from the last video and made some minor modifications to it and gave it a new paint job to signify that it's a new model of SSTO. This is our currently our only real reliable working SSTO. We do have the one from the very first videos, but it's using some rather old tech. This is basically going to be a direct descendant of the Minmus mission from the last video, but hopefully a lot more efficient this time and with the solar panel, of course. And we're going to get this up to a fairly high orbit because our payload needs to get up to a very high orbit. It needs to get up to geostationary orbit, kerbostationary orbit, basically where it stays in the same place over Kerbin at all times. And our payload was very eager to get there in a hurry. Yeah, I don't know why it flew out like that. It was a little bit weird. But uh, we do actually have a solar panel this time. The uh, satellite is upgraded with a new solar panel, which uh, surprisingly doesn't throw off our uh, center of gravity at all, thankfully, because we need to do a lot of burning for this and get it out basically halfway between the Mun and Kerbin. So we do need to have a very specific orbital velocity for this, and it turns out you don't actually have to be exact. And here's what Kerbal Stationary Orbit looks like, and here's what the science reward for that looks like. Very nice. But we have our ever-growing issue of Jeb being stranded in orbit. Well, not stranded. He can come back home, but it's just very scary to get him back home, especially with the new re-entry heating and the way that it behaves with wings. Yeah, if you tip up the wings in any sort of way, they rip off immediately. Much more realistic to real life, I feel like, but uh, not what you're used to in the original game. So we do finally find a beach suitable for Jeb's landing. And... <laughs> Yeah, the plane, uh, the plane's got some issues. Uh, this is why you always check your dry center of mass to center of lift, uh, folks. You empty the craft of all of its fuel and make sure that it still operates as a plane with no fuel in it. Because, uh, yeah, this happens. But Jeb survived this one, so, you know, good enough for us. Uh, he can... He can go sort that out with the hospital later, because right now it's time for a shopping spree. That's right, we picked up some brand new parts. These are going to help us so much in building much bigger space planes. I take a look around and I'm trying to figure out what to buy, so we end up buying this node, which has a few cool parts with it. It has some neat little adapters and stuff. Parts that I'm hoping will help us send a 200 ton lander to Minmus, which is exactly what our little chunker probe wants us to do. And I decided to send a 200 ton SSTO to Minmus. It turns out, though, that's not quite as straightforward as it might sound, because I went through a lot of designs. First off, we started off with a seaplane. It blew up. We went with another seaplane. It blew up. The next one blew up. Then we went with a ski plane, seaplane. It blew up, too. Uh, we went with a land-based one. I bet you can guess what happened to that one. Yeah, it blew up. It didn't even take off the ground. None of these has taken off the ground yet. But we did start getting more success, slowly, and uh, we did get off the ground. And eventually, I came up with something which is both heinous and beautiful at the same time. But that's going to have to wait till next episode, unfortunately, because it's going to be a very big mission. On the left-hand side of your screen are some pictures sent in by viewers just like you, and on the right-hand side of your screen is either the next episode or the last episode, depending on when you're watching this. And thank you so much for keeping up with the series. I'll see you next week.